Is the WEF right, the World Economic Forum, are they right when they say you'll own nothing and be happy? I think it's possible that that could be a true situation. Now, before you all leap up and say, hang on a minute, Richard, that's being, you're being a traitor. Have you been infiltrated? No, 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 no. Hear me out on this. Let's just look at our own situation where we are. It seems that we're all driven to earn money and we have to earn that money in, in many different ways and not always very helpful or satisfying ways. This is a broad statement, a sweeping statement. I mean, a lot of people, a lot, not everyone, of course, but a lot of people go to a job that they don't enjoy. They are interacting with people who ha have a hierarchy, which is forcing more and more, it seems today, pressures on individuals. They're getting stressed. They're trying to earn enough money to pay a mortgage, to pay for the car, to pay for perhaps education for the children, to bring food on the table. It's hard work. You've You've got childcare to pay for whilst both of you are off at different jobs. You're not, you don't see each other in the same way. And then in the evening, you're shut away in different rooms at the house, watching screens, putting your VR headsets on. You're on the computer, on social media, and and the whole family is sort of spread apart. In and you barely come together. And there's this sort of misunderstanding what the children want from life and the generations before when no 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 that we didn't do that and all of that life is quite difficult at the moment it's quite stressful it's 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 annoying in some ways it's not so much the joy that we think life should be but more of just an existence so could the wef's phrase that you'll own nothing and be happy be a possible thing? I mean, I'm not talking, let me make this very clear, I'm not talking about pushing people into 15-minute cities. I'm not talking about having surveillance cameras ensuring that you don't drive across the town X many times and then you'll be fined. I'm not talking about biometrics in the supermarkets so that they can recognise you as you come in and then when you spend your money, the central bank digital currency. I'm not talking about a system in which if you've been a bad boy and posted something on a social network or you've been arrested for something or whatever, it's reflected in how you spend your money in the central bank digital currency. I'm not talking about that situation at all. I'm not talking about how children are being educated in a state system, which the children now it seems are being uh, sexualized very early on in their life and that progressive uh, knowledge is being given to children so that the families are becoming even more atomized than before. I'm not talking about that system in which we're being penalized if we do things wrong and we're shuffled into what would seem to be like prisons. Not talking about that. So what do I mean then by you'll be happy and own nothing? And why would I think that that could possibly be right? Well, imagine society very different. Imagine that you don't have a mortgage. Imagine that you don't have to earn that significant amount of money at all, but that you are free to live in your house for perpetuity or move to another house. Imagine that you don't have to have that money. Forget for the moment how that comes about. Just imagine the relief of not having to do that. What would that mean? If you didn't have to have that huge chunk of earnings coming in every month. Would that free you up a lot? Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay, so let's say you don't have to do that. What about food? If you didn't have to earn any money to earn food, if food was free, would that be good? And I'm not talking about bugs or precision breeding. I'm not talking about food that's grown in a lab and delivered to you on some form of drone. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about organic, healthy, uh, life-giving food with nutrients and vitamins that make you feel great. I'm talking about water that is clear and free from all sorts of nasty things like fluoride. If you didn't have to earn the money to pay for that, would that not make you feel happy that you could have that food? Okay, so you're saying, 
All right, that sounds great. How, where do I sign on for that? Okay, there is of course, there is of course a price to pay, but I think the price to pay for it is so much better than the price we're paying at the moment. The long hours of commuting, going to work, the stress, the worry, have we got enough money to pay Peter, to pay Paul, to bring in the food? What if we had a society in which all the housing stock is free, that the food is free, that you are part of a community that is friendly and cohesive, that there is singing and laughter, that you meet regularly, that in the evenings you're outside with your fellow man, not all the time, that you visit the taverns and pubs and you can have good wholesome food there and drink and you're all respectful and crime is low. How is that even possible? Is that even desirable? I think so. Maybe most people would say that sounds like, where is it? Is it a holiday camp? Where do we go to sign up there? A society like this, I think, could exist that you wouldn't need to own anything. It's not that it can be taken from you, but that you are an active member of that community. What if there was a society in which there were fields around your houses perhaps in the middle in the square, perhaps on the outside, in which all the people were part of the growing of that food. Not hard back-breaking work like, you know, in the Middle Ages where you had to get a pickaxe or you were doing it all by hand or, or you had a, a horse and a plough and it was very slow, although a horse and a plough doing it might be part of it, but where some machinery was required, but not big machinery, not massive, noisy, heavy machinery, but small machinery and animals, maybe horse and plough, maybe small tractors like the old little Ma Massey Ferguson. But that's irrelevant, really, that the community get together on these bits of land that surround the community and grow stuff. They toil on the soil, they prepare it, they sow it, they grow it and they harvest it together. And as the, each of these little elements go, they celebrate and they come together that there are many people back on the land engaging with nature, watching as the, as the bunnies gimbal around, as the foxes are looking for their prey as the birds and the butterflies and the bees are all swarming around, enjoying life, as you watch nature unfolding around you, you see the wonderful trees that blossom and bloom in, in a cacophony of leaves, that there, as a cohesive society, you all are working together on the land to bring the food to your houses and table. Though you may not be in your houses very much because you may be down at all the different taverns and meeting places where perhaps you're having a barbecue this night to collectively or a barn dance or various things that are going on that you're helping with bringing in the cows and the milking, that you're helping with the sheep shearing when it comes to that time that all around there are these small independent businesses, people doing business but not necessarily generating money, but helping like somebody making shoes and clothes and um, all sorts of stuff, a blacksmith perhaps forging, not just in the old fashioned way, although they could do, but they can use modern technology because we are quite clever now. We have all this knowledge and technology. We can speed the process up a bit. So we have labour saving devices for those, hold, those hard things uh, so that it saves us having to get too tired. But people, people working in a community together where you don't have to go on these long journeys every day. So therefore, a community like this 
the streets wouldn't have so many vehicles. You wouldn't need them. It's not that you're trying to get rid of them deliberately. You just wouldn't need them because the society is all here. That's not to say that you can't go traveling, that you can't go on holiday, that you still can't visit other countries and, and go in aeroplanes, that you would still ha have a vehicle, but perhaps not everybody would have that need of a vehicle because you're not using it all the time. Perhaps there are shared vehicles that are just parked up at the side of the community community that if you're going a hundred miles to visit friends and family on a different community then you would have those vehicles that would be fine but what if this society didn't need all these things that we've put into position at the moment because we're all desperately trying to earn the money if there's a society in which we're we're bringing the labor of the the producing of food the producing of those necessities together but it's joyous it's fun it is hard work but there's the pride the joy the satisfaction from working together and laughing and and celebrating those little uh, things the 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 traditions that once happened in this country the, the the may day celebrations the drinking of nice ales and wines homemade or or uh, you know local small producers making them people helping them nobody really getting paid for it but contributing as a society so that actually the the need of money in the way that we think of the need of debt goes that you don't need to earn, sorry, you don't need to earn the money to own something like big ticket items. You might own your, your furniture and books and your clothes and, and all of that. I'm not saying you wouldn't own those, but those things that you, that we have to labor very hard for, that in, if you took that, those earning capacities away so that people just helped one another, that the elderly who are getting on a bit wouldn't need to toil, that we, they would have their food for free, but they would have their life stories to tell. You'd still have entertainers coming in. You'd still have cinema, but perhaps the cinema is not these big blockbuster, horrible, um, frightening things, but more uh, engaging that perhaps the, the society, the village gather together and they start to talk and, and share something, something visceral about their culture and their land. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm speculating. Is it possible that actually in the future we could be in a position where we are abundantly happy that the land is providing us not only with our food, but with our life and our society, our reasons to be alive, our shared culture, being able to talk to your fellow man and woman across the garden hedge about something that happened just down the road, not what happened on another side of the world, not the trinkets of celebrity, not the nonsense of fear from some think tank on the other side of the world, but those things that matter, the love, the laughter, the fun and the hard work. I may not quite have got this articulated correctly, but I think it's possible that we don't need to own these big ticket items uh, uh, and, and we could still be happy. It's, it's an embryonic idea, but it's far, far better, I feel, than what the WEF, the World Economic Forum, and those, those devils that seem to have dreamt up what potentially could be great, but they seem to have twisted it and turned it into something very, very miserable. And I think we, the people, need to take back that responsibility and decide what version of that actually would be beneficial and whether we want that or not.